Hey everyone, today I have an exciting new lens from Lumix, the 50mm f1.8. This new prime from Panasonic accompanies the flagship f1.4 S Pro lens and follows the same form factor as the recent 85mm f1.8 lens. I've had the opportunity to test the new 50mm from Lumix at a number of locations over the last seven days, starting with the beautiful Nyman's Gardens. Let's take a closer look at some of the images Laura and I captured. In this first photograph, we can see that I'm nice and sharp while the background is soft with the f1.8 aperture. Really nice separation considering I'm sanding very close to the wall. I've stopped down to f2.2 here. We can zoom in and see incredible details. Really sharp, uh, literally sharp. I've always enjoyed capturing close up and wide portraits with the 50 millimeter. I thought this image looked great in black and white with the natural light entering the frame from the left side. We can zoom in and see incredible details inside the flowers. The stamens are super clear and sharp. A few days later, I made my way to Seven Sisters on the south coast of England. The plan was to capture some fashion lifestyle shots with my friend Tess. I'm using the 50mm f1.8 paired with my Lumix S1R. Phil kindly diffused the harsh light while Tess and I tried out a few different compositions. The 50mm 1.8 has been excellent for video. This footage is using the standard profile shot in 5K. This was my favourite shot from the set. I love the way we can see the model and the environment behind. Capturing the scenery is always important for me to tell the story from the day. We walked down from the cliffs to the beach. These wooden beams made for a great photo. I just felt the light was a little too harsh. A location I'll return to for sunset maybe. This side of the wood provided even lighting and the subtle light streaming through the gaps added interest. The colors worked really well with Tess's outfit. Here we have some more 5K footage from the S1 and the 50 millimeter. Even while moving back and forth, the autofocus is smooth, tracking Tess's eye. Using the Ninja V from Atmos, I have recorded the S1R's EVF. We can see the face, body and eye also focus working nicely. I like to use AFC while always pressing the back button focus. This way the camera is always locked on to the subject and I can take photographs with the front shutter release. A small side note here, I like to use cloudy white balance while working with models. When they're looking at the back of your screen, it's always nice to see a warmer image much closer to the way I would edit anyway. Here I'm moving focus away and testing how quickly it picks up Tess's face and eye. After a quick outfit change, I wanted to see if we could capture flares without the lens hood attached.
The 50mm focal length has always been a favourite among photographers. Film cameras are infamous for being paired with the 50mm and it's extremely common for photographers to go with the 50mm as their first prime. There's many reasons for this but I believe it's versatility and lifelike rendering to be the two strongest areas. We can capture a wide variety of content with a 50mm, everything from portraits to landscapes. We headed further up the cliffs, at this point the light was perfect to use as a key light. I just had to shoot from low to avoid casting my shadow. Tess created some fun and playful poses which look great with the wide environment. So let's take a closer look at the files from the Seven Sisters. This shot was captured at f1.8 and we can zoom in and see fantastic detail even at the widest aperture. I really like the colours in this shot, straight from the camera, nice and timeless, just the way I like it. Moving on to this shot of Tess, we can zoom into the iris, we're able to see me in the reflection, always a good sign of a sharp lens. Again, I really love the colours in this shot. So this is the raw file and this was captured at f2.8. For comparison, I wanted to capture a portrait at f1.8. We can zoom in and see perfect sharpness. The eyelashes are highly detailed even with extreme zoom. Again, I'm visible in the reflection of the iris. And finally, this shot taken on the cliffs. We can zoom in and see the bird enjoying the sunset. I didn't notice this while taking the photograph, but it's definitely a welcome addition. So this final photo shoot I took the 50mm on was to capture Amy and Luke. I have the pleasure of photographing their wedding next month and I always enjoy getting to know the couple and taking a few snaps before the big day. We explored a small part of the Jurassic Coast and I only took my S1 and 50mm f1.8 along with us. I captured a small sequence using the new prime lens and a set of images along the way. I really enjoyed standing back and capturing minimal images, wide open landscapes and detailed close-ups. So in conclusion, I have put this lens through its paces, using it for all of my professional and personal photo shoots over the last week. It's not let me down and I can see it being that one lens I always take out for the day. I enjoy traveling light and as a portrait photographer, I love taking a prime lens with me. I'd recommend this lens to both anyone looking for their first prime and professionals looking to add the 50mm to their S series collection.